We are on the north end of the Outer Banks of North Carolina, up in Corolla, North Carolina, where they have four-wheel drive beach access. We're over in the side parking lot here, airing down, and part of our mission today is determined, can a two-wheel drive truck make it out on the sand with airing down and good momentum? This is a 2011 Toyota Tundra two-wheel drive, but it does have the limited slip differential in the back, so that should help. So as we leave this parking lot, we're just going to turn left and the road should dead end into the sand. So the first thing that I notice as I enter the sand is that it is relatively flat. It also has some moisture in it from the precipitation the night before, and we also have cloud cover that will prevent some evaporation. So that leads to pretty firm sand that's easy to get traction on even in two-wheel drive. Once you're able to get into a set of ruts that are on the right side, you can really just keep driving north until you either get to the town of Corova and you want to go into some of the side streets, or until you get to the dead end fence where the Virginia North Carolina border is. You can see to the left that we're getting into the first few houses of the village of Corova. All of the houses out here are accessible by this four-wheel drive beach only. There are different pathways that can get you over the dunes and into the network of residential streets, but all the streets are just sandy roads. You can go back there and you can explore some and probably see some wild horses, but you just need to make sure that you're being respectful of the residents and of the people that are vacationing out there. You gotta look out for no trespassing signs because some of the property is privately owned. It took us about 45 minutes to get all the way north to the Virginia border. The beach does start to converge down and get pretty narrow with limited options for turning around. Now this is where you can really see the difference in four wheel drive because I can just crawl up the dune and go ahead and do a three point turn. But that's gonna be much more difficult to accomplish in two wheel drive. This was the only time that the two-wheel drive tundra got stuck for the entire day. We had a little bit of trouble going across the ruts and the deeper and softer sand. Now although this would have been a pretty easy self-recovery with a shovel and some 2x4s, I decided to just hook a strap up to his front bumper and pull him forward. Now this is where choosing the right line is very important. So we're going to try reversing the drive tires up the dune and then using gravity to continue the momentum forward to be able to complete a three-point turn here. So we found the limit of two-wheel drive on the sand. We actually made it all the way up to the Virginia-North Carolina border. And the problem is not going straight once you get in a set of ruts. The problem is getting turned around. You can see it's pretty narrow here by the beach. The only option was this loose sandy dune. Luckily, we're able to get a pretty easy recovery going on. We're just digging out behind the tires, trying to flatten out any of the resistance. And especially in front of the front tires. Trying to turn sharp when you don't have four-wheel drive causes a lot of resistance and it will cause almost like a snowplow effect where sand gets built up. Xterra Rob has asked me to put together a list of the top five driving tips for driving on the sand in two-wheel drive. Tip number one, know your truck. You may have only an open diff with traction control. Right. You may have a limited slip differential. You may have a locker. All of these things will help you get through the sand. Tip number two, recovery. Make sure you bring a shovel to dig in front or behind your tires if you are to right, get stuck. Reverse. Also, bring a tow strap. Tip number three, pick your line. Even when it comes to switching lanes or switching ruts, try to find where somebody has already driven and already packed down the sand just a little bit. Tip number four, momentum. Once you start, you do not want to stop. And tip number five, lower your tire pressure. I was running 14 to 15 PSI all the way around. This lowering your pressure is going to give you a larger contact patch and allow your tires to float over the sand versus trying to plow through them. Staying on top of the sand is the most and important part, free. and that is 
definitely the most important tip. Did no one even see that? No. Nope. Oh, that was awesome.